What it is, peeps? Zero here, bringing some domination on, I think this is called Village. I, I was always really bad at remembering the map names in Black Ops, and I haven't even bothered to learn them yet on Modern Warfare 3. But today, I'm going to cover something that I think is kind of important in this game, and nets you a lot of points and is actually kind of fun when you're trying to be a pain in the ass. And that is shooting down air support. And that's almost a necessity in this game, just because so many people run the support kill streaks, and there's so many different kinds of kill streaks in the assault class that always have air support up. So it's usually a pretty good idea to have at least one or two people on your team with some sort of launcher taking down air support. And while it was somewhat important in other Call of Duty games, it's just far more important in Modern Warfare 3, just because there's so much of it, and it makes a big difference. Now that the game's new, having a UAV up, and since people don't really know the whole travel paths and don't know exactly where to expect people yet, it really helps. It gives your team one hell of an advantage over the enemy team. Hmm. Lost my train of thought here. This is one of my favorite maps for playing an assault rifle on here. has long lines of sight, and you can kind of just stand back and play more defensively in a lot of places here, which every once in a while is a good change of pace, especially if you have a bad connection, which Modern Warfare 3 has a lot of. <laughs> As you can see, I got taken out by some air support there, although not much you can do about a Predator missile unless you have one of the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it'll take out Predator missiles if they're coming after you. One of the equipment things. It's not the Halo system, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, back on my train of thought here, I was talking about shooting down air support. And as you can see, I'm getting ready to do my first one. And especially the bigger air support packages on the support streaks, like the Osprey, things like that, very valuable to shoot those down because they can drop a lot of really important care packages on the enemy team and give them a really huge advantage. So if somebody takes that out before it gets dropped, then you're doing your team a big favor. And even if you aren't a team player and you're only concerned about your own score, well, just look at the amounts of points I'm getting for shooting those down. They're valuable to you, too. So, shooting down air support in this game, it's a great way to get air... or not get air support. Well, it does help build up on your point streaks for your kill streaks, but it also just gets you a lot of points and helps you level up faster and unlock the better guns, because a lot of the best guns don't get unlocked until later in the game especially assault rifles, but if you want to play submachine guns, you can have some decent ones off the first, which I typically play submachine guns in Modern Warfare 3. All the maps just seem to be more geared toward close range encounters, and assault rifles just don't really cut it when you're shooting from the hip and sprinting around corners and things like that. So typically, submachine gun, for me at least, is the way to go. I'd like to play shotguns, but the shotguns are still kind of useless. They said that they've patched them and kind of got them going, but I still haven't got much benefit from that, and that's usually because I'm playing on a pretty weak connection, and anything that is single shot, even on a weak connection, you're, or even burst fire like the Type 95, you're pretty much screwed unless you have a great, like, four bar. And I don't have that all that often. In fact, last night I've had a two bar for quite a while, so I just resorted to playing Riot Shield and trying to bash people down with that. And even on a two bar, you'll sneak up behind somebody that's just standing there and bash them in the back, and you won't even get a hit marker while they're standing there not doing anything. <laughs> so hopefully they iron out some of the connection issues a little bit more. Overall, though, I'm starting to enjoy the game a whole lot more than I was in the beginning. I'm starting to learn the maps a lot better starting to learn where to expect people and some of the travel routes and where they might be coming toward me from. And once you know that, it makes the game a whole lot more enjoyable. There's still a whole lot of just complete bullshit deaths that I have from putting a whole bunch of bullets in somebody and then falling over dead when they're not even looking at me. But I'm preventing that more and more just by knowing where they're going to be coming from, even though sometimes it still doesn't save you. But it gets a little bit better. <laughs> a few other things are still kind of bad. The knife lunge is still a little bit overpowered. And there's that. Quick scoping is still back in the game. There was one game I had. I don't know how many times I got no scoped and quick scoped. 
just I don't know how many times in a row it happened. It was just ridiculous. The sniper rifles are just bullshit in this game. I think Black Ops had it right when they first started, and the sniper rifles were all but useless unless you took your time and aimed down sights and played it like a sniper rifle rather than running around just throwing it up, pulling off shots left and right. Because if they wanted to make it realistic, sniper rifle would be as heavy and slow you down as much as the light machine guns, if not more, and probably be even slower aiming down sights. But they had to screw it up because too many people were bitching and they wanted their quick scoping. But you can't please everyone, so they please the most vocal majority, I guess. I'd say there's probably more people that hate quick scoping that like it. They just don't sit around and complain about it as much when it's not in the game. And here I'm going after air support again. <laughs> I'm just taking it down right and left in this game and netting me a whole bunch of points and really helping out the team quite a bit. Because if they had that air support up, we'd be dying a whole lot more. And they'd know where we were at. Oh, there's that helicopter. I think this is my fourth piece of air support this game that I've taken down, or that I am taking down here. And I'm... Oh, no, it didn't go. <laughs> For some reason it missed, so I'm still just shooting at it because I'm in a position between the flags here. I can try to cover them when people are taking them. But that's really my point for the whole video, is take down as much air support as you can, because it really helps your team out in a game where there's so much of it. And as far as Modern Warfare 3 goes, yeah, it's playable now. It, there's still bad points, but it just takes some getting used to, especially coming off of Black Ops. I'd say it's a lot like Modern Warfare 2, probably Modern Warfare 2.5 is an accurate comparison, which a lot of people are calling it. Um, there are things which make it even worse than Modern Warfare 2. Well, not that Modern Warfare 2 was bad, I actually liked it, but I think once they get all the connection issues ironed out, it's going to be a pretty solid game, and I hope they stay on the whole path of supporting their game like Treyarch did with Black Ops, and continually updating and not do like they did in Modern Warfare 2 and just make one or two updates and then abandon it. Because the bar has been set pretty high, and let's hope they follow through with where it's at. Personally, I'm just looking forward to the next couple of weeks as people start dropping off the game and start, you know, going, doing other things, not playing as much, because I think that'll help out a lot with just the horrible players on the other team laying prone, camping in corners, playing every game mode like TDM, no matter what it is, because it's kind of frustrating playing against people like that. People that drop shot you from behind, even if you're not looking, you know, they still get a drop shot every time they pull the trigger. Hopefully it'll thin them out a little bit, and once you get rid of those people, the game's going to be a lot better. And once there's not as many people online, I'm assuming the connection will probably end up a lot better as well. And then, of course, the Christmas noobs are going to come in. It's going to have a whole bunch more of that stuff, but it's also going to be easy pickings for people that know the maps and people that are used to playing the game. So everything's only looking up from here, and I'm looking forward to playing even more. And I'm looking forward to live streaming and doing a lot more videos. I'm really, really enjoying live streaming lately. It gives me a chance just to interact on the fly. And hopefully, I can get that built up, kind of like my channel is getting built up. It's finally showing some growth now, which I'm happy about. I've been working on it for almost a year, and I'm just about to hit 200 subs. So I think I'm going to have to have some sort of celebration when I hit 200, and I'm going to have to try going on from there. But one of the things that's really picked up on my, or helped my channel pick up on YouTube, is from the live streaming. I have a little banner on my live stream that points people to my YouTube, and they come here, and a lot of people subscribe, and it's helped out a lot. So if you're looking to help grow your YouTube channel and you have a computer that can support it, I wholeheartedly recommend live streaming. And it's a whole lot of fun in its own right. You don't get to cherry pick your games and only show the best of the best, so people see you running around dying a lot. Especially me, because I was running around with a riot shield for about two days of play, just not even really doing anything and going super negative. But... I'm having fun with it, and I think it's entertaining to watch, and definitely entertaining to hear people's reactions and hear your teammates laughing and everything else. 
So if you're interested in seeing that, come on over to my live stream. Um, I usually tweet it out, so might be handy following me on Twitter to know when I'm doing it. But it's Twitch TV slash Prototype Zero. Real hard to predict, and you know my Twitter and everything's in the link in the description of this video anyway, so it shouldn't be all that hard to find. But that's where I'm at with this game, and that's how things are going. So hopefully, everything just continues to improve because. As the days go by, I just seem to keep having more and more fun every day, and I think it's going to continue that way, at least for a while, especially with my uh, win-loss ratio just keep going up and up. I, if I don't really care all that much about stats, but that's one stat I do kind of care about. I don't like losing, and I'll go super, super negative just to keep losing on my KD, so. <laughs> and plus, playing with riot shields and stupid glasses doesn't work all that well, so. Not really concerned with my KD all that much, and I think it's showing. But, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, every interaction, thumbs up, comments, even thumbs down, help. So, let me know what you think, and hopefully I'll see you at the live stream. Later.